today we continue with part 7, not part 6, of our Hibernate tutorial for Java programmers. In the previous tutorial, in tutorial 6, in part 6, we decided we worked on a one to many relationship and we had a problem. That problem is a problem of duplicate mapping, where one of the entities created additional tables which are actually redundant tables for, for us. So, how do we resolve this? We are resolving it by using an attribute called the mapped by attribute. Again, I'd like to remind you to subscribe to my channel if you've not, and leave me a comment. Let's discuss because this motivates me uh, every time. The mapped by attribute is an attribute of the one to many relationship. Take note, you don't you have this mapped by attribute in the one to many, not in the many to one. You use the mapped by attribute to tell the one to many. To tell the one to many uh, annotation, so this is actually annotation that the relationship has already been handled using a foreign key in the corresponding entity. In this way, additional table will not be created. So, when you use map by in the one to many, you are telling the one to many entity, the one site in this case is either the the the, the location or the user entity that it should not worry about the mapping. It should not create any table because the mapping has already been done by the corresponding entity, uh, which is at the many site, using, uh, an, using an ID, using, using an ID. Okay, so let's implement this to solve this problem and we now see what next to do. So in the one to many, we are going to tell this uh, entity that the mapping has been done. So I'm going to say maps by equal to uh, user equal to user. So it's telling this that in the post entity, the mapping has been done by the user entity by the user field of the post entity. So if we go to post. You're actually saying that the mapping has been done at these points. So you specify this field. So that is what we do here. So if we go to location as well, we are going to say at one to many map by equal to a user map by is equal to user in case of post. Let's see. Uh, in case of one to many, in case of location, location has many users. Map by is equal to location. Because when we are talking about user location, we have in the user, uh, we have in the user, and we are telling. So let's not make no mistake about it. So this is where the mapping has already been done in the many to one side. So in the location at this point, we are telling it that the mapping has already been done by the location field in the other side. Take some time to get your head around this because it's actually not difficult to understand. It's intuitive, it's clear to understand. We are going to run it at this point and we are going to see that those duplicate tables has actually been removed. So we only have one part of the relationship doing the mapping and we've actually cleared up this mix up or this confusion uh, or this tug of war between the two entities trying to do the mapping themselves. We've resolved the conflict. So I'm going to save everything and I'm going to relaunch this application. So the key thing I want you to know is that learn that the mapped by attribute is used to tell the entity that the mapping has been done in the other side of the relationship and that this entity should not worry about doing additional mapping or creating additional tables. All right, so let's see what we have. So uh, everything should be fine. Tomcat started, uh, yeah. So let's go to check that these tables, additional tables, which you have here, you have here let's see that they have been uh, gotten rid of. I'm going to connect again. And you can see that we've resolved the conflict uh, between these two entities. 
So mapped by allocation, mapped by attribute of the at one to many. Mapped by goes with at one to many. Make no mistake about it, because it's really very important for you to understand what is happening under the hood. So now we've completed up to part seven. Up to part seven, yeah, part one to seven, because I think this is part one to seven, as you can see from the beginning. So start continuing from part eight. You can just click on part eight to twelve, where we are now going to talk about a problem, another problem to resolve, because the problem is that you need to solve problems or need to be able to debug, uh, and that saves you time. Infinite recursion problem is a problem that all programmers, all Java, all Java programmers using Spring should be able to resolve, and that is the start of part eight. We'll see how we solve this infinite recursion problem. So feel free to click on that. And I'm going to now switch over to part eight. And I'm going to thank you for viewing. I'd like to remind you to subscribe. Also talk to me by leaving a comment below. And uh, we see in the next part, and that will be part eight, where we talk about joint columns.